don't we don't march and protest because we like to march and protest. All we want to do is be free. Sean King from New York. Sean King. Good morning. Hey, good morning, everybody. You know, if you're listening to TJMS, chances are that you want to reform the thing that most people call the criminal justice system. In the community where we're fighting to reform it, we're actually starting to call it the legal system because it's not really just, and everybody who enters into this system is not a criminal. But whatever you call it, whatever we call it, there's a big point that I want to teach us this morning. It's not really one big system. And because it's not one big system with one set of rules, with one set of laws, with one CEO, but instead is 30,000 little systems, each with their own set of rules and laws and policies, it can't be reformed or overhauled or even just torn down in one fell swoop. To change this system, it has to be changed in many instances, one jail, one prison, one police department, one sheriff's office, one DA's office, one town, one city, one county, one state or one law at a time. And I think this is both great news for us and in some ways, horrible news for us. It's great because while we might not be able to change the whole system, even just right now, we're strong enough to change parts of it piece by piece, person by person, law by law. Organizations and activists all over the country are targeting individual police departments, individual jails, and we're seeing some progress there. So the great news is that if you are determined and organized enough, you can change these micro systems in real ways that impact tens of thousands of lives. I have some friends, I know this is hard for some people to hear, I have some friends who chose to work with the Trump administration to change the micro systems in the federal government. While only about 7% of all people are in federal prisons, over the past two years, working with the Trump administration, they've been able to help free over 3,000 men and women from federal prison. And just over the past few months, hundreds more have been let go under the First Step Act. That's great news. That's what happens when we focus and act on the microsystems. We can start to change them. But here's the problem. We have 1,719 state prisons, 109 federal prisons, 1,772 juvenile correctional facilities. That's what they call them. We have 3,163 local jails. We have 80 Native American jails and about 100 military prisons and immigration detention facilities. That means that we have about 7,000 jails and prisons in the country. We currently have 12,501 police departments. We have about 3,000 county sheriff's offices. We have about 2,500 other police departments from campus police departments on college campuses to state police departments and other law enforcement agencies, which means we have about 18,000 different law enforcement agencies nationwide. I've talked about it on air, but we have about 2,400 district attorneys. These are the locally elected prosecutors. In your county, they may be called the county attorney or the state's attorney. Either way, 93% of all court cases go through those 2,400 offices. You may have heard me say recently that of the 2,400 DAs, just about 150 of them cover 50% of all people who are incarcerated. So let me do the math on this. We have 2,400 DAs plus 18,000 law enforcement offices, 7,000 jails and prisons. That's 27,400 little systems that we need to change. And if we add to that number all the different local and state and federal agencies that fall outside of those three main categories, we end up with somewhere around 30,000 different law enforcement agencies in this country. And what we've learned is that we have federal laws, state laws. But we also have county laws and city laws. For instance, I've had some friends have to deal with this over the past few days. In the city of Atlanta, 
which is the city itself is really just one small circle in the much bigger map of Metro Atlanta, which is about 15 different counties. It's now legal in the small city of Atlanta to possess a tiny amount of weed and carry it in your pocket. But if you take that weed to the next city or the next county over, which may still be considered Metro Atlanta, you probably will have broken the law. If you take that weed to the airport, you will have broken federal law because weed is still illegal federally. The point is just traveling around Atlanta with a little weed in your pocket is a highly complicated thing because we don't have one system. We have tens of thousands of smaller legal systems in the United States. We have 51,200 judges, as you likely saw in the Amber Geiger case, each judge can run their courtroom in wildly different ways. While each judge has local and state and federal laws to consider, they have huge leeway in how to run the court and how to interpret those laws. We have over 1 million law enforcement officers across local, state, and federal departments. And as we've seen, each of them interpret the policies and laws in their own unique ways. And I said all of that to say this, we can't solve a problem that we can't describe. We can't solve a problem if we don't even really know the equation. We need to be able to dig deeper, much deeper, and describe the problem better so that we can work to solve it. And today, I just wanted to do this overview because for the next few months, I'm going to try to lead us in some ways to help us proactively address some of the biggest challenges in this system. And I just need us to understand the size and scope of what we're up against. Take care, everybody. And everybody's got to get paid. Oh, yeah, man. All of that. I mean, so it's all of that funded with billions of dollars, Tom, billions and billions of dollars. That's why it's so corrupt. Money. Yeah, man. Yeah, wow. absolutely. I mean, it's a well-funded system. That's huh. for sure. Wow. All right, Sean King. Appreciate y'all. All right.